Hi, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I do not know what I'm filming as I film this at the beginning. I think what we're going to do today is a host of ukuleles that you folks have asked me about in emails and phone calls or in store uh, throughout December and early January because we had so many new things arrive the last couple of months and things that I wanted to feature but I didn't find the right video or the right time. Um, a real random assortment of instruments but sometimes they make for the best videos I find. So we're going to look today at um, the difference between a standard concert and a long neck concert. We're going to look today at a couple of Enya models that you wouldn't have seen in the UK before. We're going to look at an Anui Nui UT100. We're going to look at Big Island. We're going to look at a Faith ukulele. I've, I'm trying to figure out a way of tying it all in, but I guess the common theme here is these are ukuleles that you folks want to hear me talk about, want to hear sound samples of, and um, I'm going to try and get as many of them done in one video as I can for you today. Starting with some Ana Ole ukuleles. These arrived just before our shop move, actually, three months ago, and we had a big batch of about 12 ukuleles come. They're made in Pearl City, Hawaii. They are the most affordable of the Hawaiian ukulele brands. They are cosmetically, I would say, the weakest of the Hawaiian brands. You know, no offense to Gareth, who makes some fantastic instruments in, in Hawaii, but these ukuleles are half the price of, say, a Kanalea K1. But finish wise, you know, they are about 60% of the way there. Sound wise, though, these remind me of early Kamakas. They have a traditional edge to them, and these ones are very, very cool. They look like they are the same instrument on first inspection, but as I come back, hopefully you can see, we have a normal ukulele and a long neck ukulele. So the difference in these instruments is the scale length. One is a standard concert, one is a tenor neck on a concert body. Um, let's talk about the spec of these models. This is the ACH. The ACH is the half and half. So this would be the Ana Ole concert half and half. You have a mixture of koa and mango, much like the koa loa uh, naupaka ukuleles. Mango side, a mixture of koa and mango on the back, and then a koa side on these instruments. You have a mahogany neck going up to these geared tuners. And the nut width on these is more akin to a Pono or a Kala. You know, it's a much more kind of traditional Kamaka-esque neck profile and feel than a modern flight kind of layer, a Nui Nui wider nut width. But they sound good, they feel good. You have this normal ACH and then the ACHL is the exact same ukulele but with a tenor scale neck. I'm gonna play them back to back now and we'll answer that question once and for all. Is there a difference between a standard concert and a long neck concert? And in theory, what we're looking for here is more sustain on the tenor. The obvious benefits of having the longer neck if you have bigger hands is that you've got more room for your fingers. The tonal difference is going to be in the sustain. The longer the strings are pulled, in theory, the more they should ring out. So let's play the ACH and the ACHL against each other now and see what you think.
Next up today, we're going to take a look at this very special one-of-a-kind Faith ukulele. Faith is the product of Patrick Egel, a UK-based luthier who has made fantastic guitars for decades. His Faith brand, um, which is a a UK-based but Indonesian-made brand, have been producing affordable to uh, premium guitars for over a decade, and they dabbled in ukulele manufacturing for a while, which is where this instrument came from. But all that was left at the end of that dabbling were 12 prototypes, which we've had here for sale the last few months at Southern Ukulele Store. This is the only one I featured it in a video. This one has no discernible name, but I will put a link in the listing to this instrument. But the spec really interested me. It has a gloss spruce top. It's actually kind of a buff back gloss, so almost like a silk spruce top, solid, with solid trembesi back and sides. So trembesi is the um, monkey monkey pod, um, a real really nice hardwood, very similar tonally to acacia. You have a mahogany neck, which is satin as well, going up to geared tuners. A very compact headstock here. I love the headstock shape of this ukulele. Ebony fingerboard and bridge. A very unique tie on bridge on this instrument. It's almost as if they didn't know what to do with the bridge themselves, but it does work very, very well. And my main takeaway from this ukulele, first of all, is the pickup. You can plug this one into an amplifier if you so wish. But this is very, very clearly a ukulele made in the Pono factory. So this is a one-of-a-kind Pono-esque ukulele at a much more affordable price. If you're after a gigging concert or a concert you can plug into an amp, this might just be the best buy on the entire website right now. So there's a link in the description for it, but I'm going to play this for you now. This is the Faith prototype number seven. I think it's called an F-U-C-E. NT. I re I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't really know. But this ukulele is uh, very, very cool, very, very sweet, and it's just a matter of time before it's gone forever. So let's give it a play and see what you think. We're going to look at a couple of Big Island ukuleles now, starting with the KXTRG. This is the all singing, all dancing Turtle Bridge Hawaiian Koa tenor ukulele. It's got lovely binding, some really nice shell binding, shell rosette. The thing I like about Big Island ukuleles is the build feels completely unique. Sometimes you find that there can be similarities with factory ukuleles, but Big Island ukes to me have always felt like home. I've owned a couple of Big Island ukuleles over the last 15 years of working here, and they've always been a brand that I get excited about personally. The depth of the Big Island is just a hair thinner than you would find on your average tenor ukulele. Really nice Hawaiian koa for the top, back and sides with maple front and back binding as well as the shell. You have an ebony fingerboard and bridge with an abalone um, turtle set turtle inlays going up the fingerboard. You have Big Island turtle headstock as well with the gold open gear tuners. A 35 mil bone nut, bone saddle. It's a pin bridge. They come in a nice gig bag and they're under a thousand pound right now, but they are offering you something that's a true alternative to a Hawaiian K brand. So, you know, this is a very, very blingy alternative to a Canelair K1 or a Koaloa KTM 00 and I love Big Island. I always see them on the wall and I always think, oh God, I wish I still had one, that kind of instrument. So I'm gonna give the KXTRG a play for you now and see what you think. Thank you. 
So I told you about the big islands that I've owned and loved over the years. I'm going to show you one of them now. This is the Big Island Pony Tea. It's an exclusive to Southern Ukulele Store. I had six tenors made, three concerts, and I believe I have two of these ponies left in stock. This has a solid cedar top with stained mango back and sides. Really lovely figured mango for the back and sides. Stained purple. I felt like that was a really nice royal regal choice for a premium ukulele. Um, this is the sister ukulele to the Uli, which is the green uh, back and sides one we had made previously. You have an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge. It's a slot bridge. It's all gloss, so even the neck is gloss. It's a mahogany neck. You have that turtle headstock with the chrome tuners and the snakewood buttons and I adore these ukuleles the reason we had these made were many years ago now we're talking six years ago we had the Canalea Sus model which was a cedar top mahogany back and sides Canalea and they were just far superior to the price point that they sat in you know, a lot of people were looking for a finger picker's uke at the high end. And at the time, no, you know, the Moonbird didn't exist, really. The Cedarbird didn't exist. You had very few options at the high end. And unfortunately, it became unsustainable for Canalea to keep getting that cedar for us without the price doubling. And we decided we wanted to find something that would fit that price instead. That price being, you know, under a thousand pounds, something that you could put a pickup in and never feel the need to upgrade and i'm testament to that as well because i've had much more expensive ukuleles but for about two years i gigged a big island uli i only sold it because i had to downsize and every time i see one on the wall much like the kxtrg i just think oh god i really like big island um the pony was i thought would be I'll be honest with you, I thought more people would be into the purple than they are. Some people just don't like the purple. But what I like about it is that from certain angles, it doesn't really look purple at all. It almost looks brown. So it could just be a conventional looking uke, but not if you kind of want the quirkiness as well. I can hear that in the shops upstairs, somebody's hammering a guitar amp now. So I'm going to stop talking for a moment. This is the Pony T. Let's give it a play and see what you think. Next up, so I'm going to take a look at a ukulele that I think I'm getting asked about the most at the moment. This is the Inui Nui UT100, also known as the Sitka Bird. Everyone by now who's watching this channel regularly will have heard of the Moonbird or the Cedar Bird or the, you know, the Koa Bird, the Frankenbird, the Sausage Bird, the Burger Bird. All of these variations that Inui Nui have done over the last seven or eight years of this amazing design. This timeless design that's somehow futuristic and traditional at the same time. It's a great look. It's a great ukulele and it's captured the imagination of more players than probably anything really else has in the last 10 years. And that's great for a Nui Nui. But they keep finding new ways of producing this design. And I personally got to a point where I was a tiny bit skeptical anytime something new came along. But I thought, you know, the UT100, it's it's much more affordable. It's uh, it's going to give more people an option to have that high-end and newy newy build. And that's this ukulele here. You have a Sitka spruce top, which is really nicely figured. Actually, arguably a sexier looking spruce top than you'd get on the Moonbird, which is the Swiss Moon Spruce. And we could argue for days about the difference in tone between Moon Spruce, Sitka Spruce, Alpine Spruce... Um, uh, Engelman spruce and there are differences a, uh, a luthier that has worked with all of them will know which one they prefer but Sitka spruce is the one you tend to see in the guitar world most commonly and seeing this spruce top with the traditional UT200 
kind of cutaway here with that sheer Anui Nui cutaway. It's very, very sexy. You are lacking the Moonbird details. It doesn't have the maple trim or the contours in the body, but what it does have is solid mahogany back and sides. Really nicely figured mahogany. Um, almost, I think it's stained slightly golden. It's got a slightly different color to it to your average mahogany back and sides. This ukulele has a lovely traditional rosette, much like the AMM series, which is the mahogany series that ukulele make, which is extremely popular. You have an Indian rosewood fingerboard and bridge, and you have a slotted headstock, which is another difference from the Moonbird. That slotted headstock with the really nice, thick uh, gear tuners feels very different to me to the UT200. Not in a bad way, just different. It's much more of a classical guitar-esque instrument. It's not quite as lightweight and responsive as the Inui Inui Moomba, but instead what you get is a fullness. It's a much it's a much deeper sounding ukulele. I think the mahogany probably does that more than anything else, the change from rosewood to mahogany. It's a great uke. It's, uh, it comes in a really nice padded gig bag, and uh, I'm only sorry that I've not had one sooner to talk about them until now. Let's give the UT100 a play and see what you think. When we moved into Absolute Music uh, at the end of September, I remember thinking that there'd be some new opportunities for us here. Although we're different companies, we did inherit some ukuleles from them and the ability to order Fender ukuleles. Now Fender have a pretty terrible reputation in the ukulele world, I have to be honest with you. And I wanted to give them a try and it was just it, kind of fortuitous for us that we would inherit some stock because there was no kind of pressure on us to have an entire wall of Fender and an entire stock room. But what we did find is some real gems. The Fullerton Jazzmaster, for example, is nothing, it's like nothing else that we have here at Southern Ukulele Store. We used to do some ukuleles called K-Waves, which were a, an acoustic ukulele made to look like an electric ukulele produced by Kawaya. And they're always very, very popular. They're laminates, but that's not always a bad thing. If you want something that you can play with on stage that's really robust, there's definitely a place for these fenders. Likewise, if you're a guitar player and you want to get into the ukulele, it's very, very cool to have a ukulele that matches your guitar. Um, they have an oven cold fingerboard and bridge with the fender headstock and the closed gear uh, Telecaster style tuners with the uh, little kiddie buttons there. It's a 35mm nut whip. They feel very compact and the pickup pick system is pretty good as well. You've got a built-in tuner. Um, I'm still on the fence. I don't really know how I feel about them. I do know that the factory Aquila strings that were on all of these Fender ukuleles were terrible. Um, they, were, uh, they were kind of pre-stretched and there was no way of getting a good intonating instrument from it. So my advice to people that want to buy a Fender ukulele would be buy it from a shop that are going to actually open the box and look at it because they require a little bit more work than most to get the best out of them. Our prices have to reflect that actually because I think um, a lot of shops must sell Fender ukuleles and kind of just try and clear them through without really giving them any care and attention. I've had to put new sets of strings on this instrument and each one's had to have about 25 minutes on the workbench. And you won't find a shop in the entire world more honest than us when it comes to things like that because I stay clear of Fender ukuleles for a really, really long time because I didn't want the shop to just start doing things that guitar shops do. But I'm really glad that we inherited these stock, this stock because it's enabled us to start having the Fender 
uh, ukulele basses, which I'm really excited to show you off in another video. In the meantime, though, we have the Fullerton Telecasters, Stratocasters, and the Jazzmasters in stock. And I think for now, that's probably the entire Fender range that we'll do. But I'm completely open to doing more Fender ukes in the future. If you've tried some and you like them, please let us know in the comments section. I'm always, always happy to hear some feedback on these instruments. For the meantime, though, let's give this Fullerton Jazzmaster a play and see what you think. I feel we're smoking him. I'm going to finish up today's video by talking about two ukuleles that I've literally never seen before. The first time I'm seeing them will be on camera for you. The first one is an Enya Feng E signature model. Now, nobody asked me about this ukulele, but I've seen it on the Enya Music website for about a year, and I keep thinking I'd love the opportunity to get one in and just see what you get at the high end with Enya, because Enya. They make these Nova U's, they make the Taimani Moons, they make instruments up to 600 pound that we've become very familiar with here at Southern Ukulele Store and at dealers around the world. But they also do quite a few high-end bespoke models. They do models up to several thousand US dollars. And it just seemed to me like a bit of a lost opportunity not giving them a try. After all, the Flight A10 series are premium ukuleles come from, coming from Flight. They're still made in China, but by a single luthier. And if Enya had some kind of similar arrangement, then maybe it was a completely untapped resource for really good ukuleles. This Feng E model is not the most premium model. They do a very, very expensive solid koa one. But the one we've got here, hopefully it's arrived in one piece. That would be a disaster. The one we've got here, is all solid acacia obviously you've seen it comes in that nice gig bag <laughs> yeah this is lovely okay so this feng e model here all solid acacia with a tobacco sunburst stain it has the sheer enya headstock that we know very very well it has a satin neck which is also tobacco sunburst and Feng E's signature there on the back. It's not too garish, it's very electric guitar-esque. I feel like I'm holding a Steve Vai signature ukulele. Um, this ukulele feels like the other Enya's to me, but the neck is more refined. You have these star inlays going down the fingerboard. The full run of spec, I won't say now because I'm not 100% sure on some of these features. I would like them to be written in the listing and confirmed by Enya first. You do have the Acoustic Plus system on this instrument, so it's got the high-end pickup to it as well. But wow, it's beautiful. Really lovely sunburst on this. Really lovely looking piece of acacia as well. Yeah, very, very pretty. Uh, you also have some uh, red binding mixed with uh, Mother of Pearl there. Gold strap button on the bo bottom and the top. Yeah, really good gigging instrument this is. The, uh, the sound hole is the F and E of Feng E. Very tasteful. It's kind of a lattice effect. Yeah. Let's give it a play and see what you think.
final ukulele we're going to look at today is another Enya. This is the Enya EUT A5. Now this is all solid Hawaiian color. Very, very tastefully done with some lovely cosmetic trim. I mean, I'm showing you guys the front, but actually the back on this ukulele is gorgeous as well with an almost green abalone um, uh, split down the middle there with back binding. Same effect on the front with the rosette. Uh, very clearly an ebony fingerboard and bridge on this ukulele and the fingerboard itself is bound. It's much harder to get across on this camera shot. I'll do you a B-roll shot now. It's high gloss on the body with a satin neck and the neck feels really wide. This is a really chunky neck profile with a really wide nut and a wide string spacing. Going up to a very cool slotted headstock. I love the top of this ukulele. That shape's gorgeous. And the tuners are stunning, absolutely stunning. So these are Enya branded tuners, but they feel really substantial, really cool. So black plate tuner with gold trim. Another ukulele that comes in a really nice gig bag as well. This is, uh, yeah, this is gonna break some hearts. Looking inside actually for the first time as well, the bracing is offset. The bracing is not conventional bracing. So there's something about the inside of this ukulele that is different to the average Enya. I'm going to give it a play though, for the first time we'll hear it together, this is the A5. I have to say first of all actually, the tuners on this are, they're the first tuners since the hip shot tuners about seven or eight years ago that I think these are the best tuners on the market. Like whoever makes these for Enya, they should be making tuners for everyone, they're just so smooth, so accurate. Bloody hell, that's gorgeous. Okay, if you're looking for a high-end ukulele of a radius, this definitely has a subtle radius to it. Don't be put off by my play, and I actually find it quite hard to play radius fingerboard ukuleles. But the tone is unmatched on this, this is gorgeous. Definitely my favourite Enya I've ever played. Cool. Yeah, this is the um, EUT A5, folks. There you have it, we've taken a look at this massive random assortment of ukuleles. What did you like today, folks? Let us know in the comments section. I don't often ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, I always find like I don't want to repeat myself too much, but it does help. So please do like the video, 
subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try and be back again next week with something new. If there's something you want to see featured that hasn't been featured, it's on the website and you're thinking, why hasn't Alex made a video on it? Please do let me know and I will strive to get that done for you as soon as possible. In the meantime though, great random assortment of ukuleles for you all today. I'll see you soon.